everybody, he here. Welcome back to another Stephen King spoiler discussion. Today we are talking about Stephen King's The Institute. Spoiler warning, spoiler warning, spoiler warning. If you have not read this book or you care about spoilers, GTFO, please and thank you. I don't want to hear anything down there in the comments about, oh my lord, you, spoil you spoiled me. Spoiled me? Yes, spoiled you too. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about almost note for note what happens in this book um, because I loved, loved, loved every everything. Um, so the book opens up with Tim Jameson. Tim Jameson um, is a disgraced cop. He uh, heard some ruckus at the mall and he went to go check it out and he shot uh, his gun. He did a warning shot, which cops aren't supposed to do to begin with, but then a light fixture fell and knocked some kid out and he was disgraced and he was fired and told to move on. He tries to get onto a plane, he gets onto the plane and something tells him to get the hell off the plane. So gets off the plane. This was a brilliant move on Stephen King's part because I'm like, okay, so we're going to find out that, you know, somebody on the plane was psychic and that's how we end up in the institute and maybe he becomes a security guard at the institute, whatever. Um, and maybe, you know, it was one of those psychic things that made him get off it, whatever. Um, that, that doesn't happen. What happens is he ends up hitchhiking to a town in uh, it's Dupre, South Carolina. He gets there. Um, he ends up taking a job as a night knocker. Basically, it's, you know, what, what we did before social media and telephones and all that stuff. Just walked around town, or alarm systems, that kind of thing. Just walked around town knocking on doors to make sure businesses were secure, to make sure people were all right. Just checking up on the town. So he gets that job. That goes so well, um, he ends up stop, stopping a, well not stopping, he ends up uh, stumbling across a robbery. And the, the, that scene with the, with the shop owner getting shot was an amazing scene for me. I, I loved it. Um, I, I was so, I, I had such concern for this person that I hadn't even met in the book yet. That's an amazing feat. Um, after that, he gets promoted. Um, he hasn't yet been promoted. He's still the night knocker, but you know that he is going to end up taking over the deputy position and the old deputy is going to become the night knocker um, because he doesn't really want to do the deputy job anymore. And then we don't hear anything from Tim Jameson and that whole crew. Oh, Orphan Annie. I hope I don't forget to talk about her at the end. Let's just talk about her now. Orphan Annie is a homeless lady who believes that uh, they are after her. Just the they. She's a conspiracy theorist. She listens to a, a show that is hosted by George Allman um, about aliens, uh, the government, uh, secret organizations, all that stuff. I loved loved the uh, Orphan Annie uh, character. I, I loved her whole character art. Um, it's just so much fun reading her because she comes across as batshit crazy, but she is the only one who's in the know. Spoilers, of course. It's spoiler discussion. Let's keep on spoiling. Then we jump from that. We completely leave, leave Tim Jameson's storyline behind. Say goodbye. Just wave. We end up jumping into the shoes of Luke, who is a little boy. He's uh, precocious. He's uh, brilliant. He's a genius. And he also has a little bit of the movie movie, <laughs> like Carrie. Uh, which is very important here. Uh, we'll get into all that stuff in my Thursday Theorist. Um, so please leave all those comments for that video next week. But we, we, it, it, things go off the rails very quickly. Um, he is kidnapped and his uh, mother and father are brutally murdered um, in, I guess, in, a, in an attempt to have no one looking for him. And the people who kidnap him are Institute employees. They steal him, they run off with him, and then we are introduced to all of these kids in the Institute. You have Kalisha, who was fantastic. Avery, Avester, was amazing. Loved, loved that character. He's probably my favorite kid character in the book, other than Luke. Kalisha's great, too. Then you have Nick, you have Iris, you have so many different people. Um, but the, the big bully guy, I can't remember what his name is, um, I loved the, when he showed up. Um, but over the time, you find out that they they need to have tokens to to you know buy uh, what is it sweets and cigarettes and wine and that's when the book started to feel like Pinocchio for me. King even references that it's like Pinocchio in the book when Pinocchio ends up going to what is it Fantasy Island? I can't remember what it's called. It's not Fantasy Island. 
that's the old television show, but whatever it was, uh, Paradise Island or whatever um, he goes to and he ends up becoming a donkey. There's so many parallels between King Story and Pinocchio that I kind of feel that that's what he was going for. I mean, for him to have mentioned it in there, it feels that way. Um, also, the book, when, he, when Luke finally gets to the Institute, the book started to feel like what would have happened had Charlie from Firestarter, if she had been telepathic or telekinetic, if she had been that instead of, you know, Bernie Bernie, if, they had actually, if the shop had actually caught Charlie, this is what would have ended up happening to her. She would have ended up being here. Now, there's no pyrokinesis. This doesn't tie into any of Stephen King's work. It does all over the place, but not. there's no hard connects as in sequels or continuations. So you don't have to worry about that. But if you're already here, you already know that, if you're here in this video. Um, the, we're, we're introduced to uh, Mrs. Sigsby, um, who's a devil, is just a, a horrible, terrible uh, human being, but she's a terrible, horrible human being with a cause, and that's what makes her so, so terrifying. Um, she has, what is the guy that's named Stackhouse? I can't remember her, her kind of, I guess he's kind of her equal, maybe just below her, and he ends up taking over the, at the Institute after Sigsby goes to chase down Luke. And why does she go to chase down Luke? Because he ends up escaping from the Institute. I thought everything leading up to that was, was terrific. I was enthralled. I had a good time, but his escape what I his escape blew my mind. It was so much fun to read about this kid going through the woods, going through this town, going through um go going getting on a boat, which is one of the reasons why I like the UK cover more than I like the Institute cover. I mean the the American cover because the boat makes more sense to me than the train. Even though he spends a lot of time on the train, his room isn't on the train. So that the, the this 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 cover uh is not to my liking. But the, uh, and that's a train, if you can't see it, um, that's a train. His room's in there. But uh, one of the things at the Institute, I, Institute that I thought was cool was all of their rooms are like their rooms at home, almost. It's very close. It's almost like a Twilight Zone kind of deal, because they're all just a little bit off. Uh, but then once he escapes and he gets on the train, everything unfolds as you would think that something like that would unfold. Um, it is a little convenient that the one person that he meets along the way um, that is kind of uh, sympathetic to his plight, uh, he does have his, he ends up having to cut his ear off uh, to get, remove the tracker. Uh, that was convenient also, not going to lie, but it, these things didn't bother me. It's just things that I noted that they put the tracker somewhere that was easily removed. Um, and I mean, I know it's hard to think about cutting your ear lobe off, but it's much easier than if they had embedded it in his chest, you know, or in his back meat or whatever. Um, so he ends up escaping, and the, there's one person he bumps into on the way on the train, gives him some food, and he's, he ends up making it to Dupre, South Carolina, where he finally, about page 400 and something, finally bumps into Tim Jameson, and we're back to square one. Tim helps him out. He's, he's very suspicious. Uh, he looks beat up and abused, so they believe his story. Uh, they they believe that he's you know he's in trouble. They just think he's making up this story that he was locked up in the institute. But while he was at the institute, he met Maureen. And Maureen was a lady with cancer who helped him escape, and she gave him a thumb drive where she explains what's going on, and then she took video of what was going on. The only real horror element in this book is the the back half of back half. I think. Um, that was very horrifying to see the kids, what they are reduced to, uh, there at the end, uh, before they are just completely used up and just basically turned into batteries, um, for the Institute. And we're going to get to why in a second. But, uh, the, the shootout in, in town when the, uh, when the Institute folks show up in Dupre, that was fantastic, man. I had a lot of fun. The book does slow down a little bit when they're trying to get back to the Institute, but that was fine for me because I like these characters and I really didn't want the book to end. But then we finally get back to the Institute and all the kids have come together to, you know, charge up and get all their power in one place and they find out that there's other Institutes in all these other places and all these different international, you know, 
different these different countries that are not in America and there's several different ones and they they link minds with those kids and the fucking institute they they lift it off the ground and drop it on the other half I thought that was amazing I, it's, it's such a cool concept and so much fun I love how Sigsby dies getting her ass shot up in the car after a uh, not Avery but after uh, Luke tricks her I thought that was that was fantastic um, so much fun uh, but the, the the book ends perfectly uh, with, e there's even a little maybe exposition a little too much explaining there at the end but we had to know right I want to know if it was the shop I, and of course I think it's the shop I think it's just called something different I'm pretty sure this is the shop that has been working to gather all this intelligence all this time but we learn that what the Institute was doing was preventing the end of civilization by nuclear war, by radiation fallout, whatever you want to call it, by nuclear war, any of that stuff, I just said nuclear war twice, but um, any of those things, biochemical war, any of those things, it, that's what they've been doing. They've been using the children to assassinate these, uh, almost like in a, a minority report uh, kind of storyline where uh, they use these precogs, precognitives, um, who know the future, and then they discuss the, uh, the ambivalence of whether or not the precogs are actually predicting the future or if just they are predicting maybe one timeline so many questions there at the end don't get me wrong this isn't an open-ended book I feel everything is wrapped up in this story is there a possibility that we could move on and find out more about these precogs yeah there could is he gonna write a sequel I have no idea but uh the the way the book ends I I just I was I was left with this with this huge question why wh why would we do such a thing to these children to drain them to make them batteries to save ourselves but the answer is of course what we would um we would sacrifice the smaller of us I mean we we do it nowadays we would sacrifice the smaller of us to maintain the status quo um, and I said this in my uh, non-spoiler review, but it, it's it's enlightening, at least for me, and eye-opening. I mean, it's, it's things that I've thought about before, but it really, really dug deep. It dug its claws into me reading this book. It's like, how far are we willing to go to make sure that we are all right? As long as it's not happening to us, how far are we willing to go? And of course, most of us, hopefully, would say you know we would choose not to torture children to make sure that there's no nuclear war but would we really given given that you know torture children or die in nuclear war how many of us truly would pick nuclear war and the destruction of mankind that is a fascinating question and there's no good answer to either side of it I dig that shit so anyways, that's that's what I loved about this. Um, I, I talked more about stuff that I love that's non-spoilery, so if you haven't watched my just, my regular review, go check that one out. It was uploaded just before this one. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this book, man, and I the more I think about it, the more I like it. It's the exact opposite of Elevation and Sleeping Beauties, where the more I thought about it, the more I hated it. Um, and I'm sure there's probably plot holes or something or whatever. I just don't care, man. I really don't. It was one of those things, just like with the Hodges trilogy, the first book, I just didn't care if there were plot holes. It was a fun read. I loved reading the book. I loved the characters. Well, Hodges I could have done without. I know that's weird since he's the main character in verse 2, but Holly Gibney was amazing. Are you excited for If It Bleeds? Are you? Because I know I am. So, anyways, this is a spoiler discussion, so talk about what you liked and what you didn't like down there in the comments below. If I don't respond to your didn't likes, it's probably because I don't want to think about the didn't likes, so I apologize, but if you want to talk about what you like, I will happily talk about that. Not saying I won't respond to your didn't likes, but I might not. Just don't take it personally. It's just because I love this book so damn much. I hope that makes sense. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Stephen King spoiler discussion review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!